there was one thing that was preventing this game agent to be like as good and as smooth to use as possible and that thing is the picking i mean when you open a project in a game agent in blender or any, or any project like that you expect to be able to select objects of course like this is a cube this is a character and you expect to be able to select this but previously in cave and this is my game agent by the way if you never see this uh, this channel before i'm making my own 3d c plus plus open GL game engine and releasing to public and by the way the links are in the description this is free you can download it and try if you want to but previously the picking was bad like it was terrible and I recommend you to download the the engine right now to give it a try because I haven't updated uh, this is not a released version this is like bleeding edge I'm developing this uh, still so, but th this new feature that I'm about to show you is done. But previously, when you selected an entity, it was like a nightmare. Half of the time, or like more than half of the time, you would select the wrong entity. And now this is fixed. And not only that, but now take a look at that. I do have a good outline so you'll be able to see exactly the entity that you selected. So this is a tree and I can select and can see that I do have an outline here. So the, the picking system is completely new. I can select this even animated character. So this is an animated character. I can go ahead and I will try because it's moving. I'm select the, the torso here and it's selected and I do have this good outline. I'm thinking to do like uh, a different color for the outline if this is like a template and the template in this game engine is basically the same as like prefab in Unity or a blueprint in a Rio that you create a class or a group in Blender, a collection in Blender. So anyways, uh, it's done and I'm very excited because of that because previously it was annoying and my camera just stopped I don't know why, but my camera keeps stopping working. It's not like an USB problem because it does work in like uh, some meetings that I go online. But anyways, uh, this is a new system and how this works, I'd like to go ahead and show you a little bit of, bit of a devlog. And this is a small video, I don't know if you guys noticed it already in the timeline, but I'm, I'm thinking about making smaller videos instead of waiting like months and then uh, a huge video. So you guys can be able, uh, will be able to see everything that's going on in the game engine and development logs, give suggestions and stuff like that. So, and, and by the way, in the end of this video, I do have a spoiler in the next feature that I'm working on so stay tuned for that uh, the way this works is uh, I'm generating a bunch of like temporary IDs uh, to the to the meshes uh, actually to the entities and it's not to the entities it's actually to the draw calls to the handleables In internally the game engine have this handleable concept which is basically something that can be handed to the screen uh, just like this tree and this 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 prop here and so on and the way it works is that for every handleable, it does uh, create, I do have like a different lookup image here that is being outputted to the handler that have a bunch of IDs. So if I handle this object right here, I'm also handling this object into a, into a different texture that stores this ID. And then, and my camera is really not trying to work. <laughs> and once I have this like this lookup, uh, texture I can just when I click somewhere in the viewport I can just go to this texture and see the ID and then using this ID I can retrieve the correct object and this is a very common technique actually it may sound like a crazy stuff but it's not it's very common that and many engines many programs with editors do use this because it's pixel perfect so if I click here in this uh, in this this alpha blended like alpha material here and this is very far away from the center of this object. But if I click here, it will still select the mesh. So take a look at that. I'm clicking here, it's selecting the correct object. So it's a very accurate way to, to select the current mesh. And now Cave Engine do have this. And it's also great because I can do very easily a script that does this cool outline. Because if you see here, it is like if there's an object on top of the, the selected object, it does have this cool outline around it. It's very simple because once I have this texture, I can just uh, make the outline in the, in, the, in the correct pixels, like the pixels with the selected ID, uh, object ID can have the outline. So it's very easy to filter this out. So again, very simple feature, but this was a nightmare before because 
picking was always wrong. And by the way, it does support like alpha material. So this is a, so I do have a tree here. I can select this tree, but now I have a semi-transparent object here on, on top of it. If I select the semi-transparent, uh, you'll be able to select the object just fine. So it does work with alpha and it does work with decals. So this is like a regular mesh. So this is a mesh component and this is a decal, okay? You can select this and it's gonna work just fine. And by the way, a decal, if you don't know what it is, is basically an object, like it's a handleable object that can attach to other stuff. So if we can see here, there is like this, uh, the fall off of the decal. Let me disable this so we're going to be able to see the decal like that. And if I want to put like uh, debris here on top of this rock on this, I can just add a decal and use it and it will gonna work just fine. So this is the decal, I can select the decal and it's like pixel perfect again. You can edit the decal material and this is very fun. I like can make a super bright and reflective stuff. You can make a super rug and non-reflective stuff. You can make it red. And so this is a decal and it's gonna work just fine. So yeah, great news for when it comes to that. We finally have a great picking. And right now I'm working in Cave to make it as usable and easy to use and pleasant to use as possible. That's why I'm working on this bunch of small features and spoilers in the, in the end of this video because there's a huge feature as well. But anyways, the next stuff that I'd like to work is, uh, there's no way to rename the mesh, the entity here from the scene graph and that's kind of no kind of annoying especially because in the asset browser i can right click and rename everything that i want here so i'd like to have the same ui the same option here that i can rename the asset in the uh scene graph as well so i'll be able to uh, rename it because right now I, I need to click here in the in the entity and then go to the properties and manually change the name here so it's kind of annoying okay anyways uh to finish this video i do have a small spoiler are you seeing this cube here? Because again, I've been tell, telling you guys that I wanted Visual Scripting for a while, for a really while, like for a long time, but I never really did anything regarding the Visual Scripting. Now, this is a spoiler. I do have here a Logic Bricks uh, asset, and let me delete this actually and create a new one because I do have a Logic Brick component. You already can create a new asset type at Logic Brick. So I'm creating this one. You can create a new component, uh, a Logic component. So I do have Python and now I do have Logic Brick and I can attach a Logic Brick, which is basically like a way to do logic, uh, but visually scripted to the component and if I press play, this is gonna run this logic break. There's no, uh, the, the back end is near done. So this logic break here is a hard coded logic break. I do not, uh, there's no way to edit it here in the UI yet, just yet, but soon enough, I will be able to edit this. And what I hard coded here, this logic break to do is to print a bunch of stuff in the system console. And by the way, uh, in the final version, there will, it will be no way to print here, only in the embedded console, but that's, that was just for testing. But I can and rotate this cube. So if I press play, I will be able to see that this cube is rotating. And this is uh, using the Visual Scripting backend. So the backend is almost done. Uh, there's like a little thing that I need to do. I actually need to serialize. I need to save and load these logic bricks. That's everything that, that's left to do. And once I have the backend done and ready to go, I'll be able to proceed to the visual scripting part to like the, the stuff where you actually open an editor and add a logic nodes and connect the node, edit the node, delete the node and stuff like that. As you can expect from a visual scripting, it's gonna be very similar to a real blueprints and similar to the Blender logic nodes as well. It's called logic bricks as a, oops, as a tribute to, to Blender game engine, but you know, you're not gonna be like the logic bricks in Blender game engine. You're gonna be more like the logic nodes in Blender game engine. But again, I just like this, no, this name, it's pretty cool and it's a great tribute to the logic bricks. So that's it that I had for you in this video. It was a quick video again. Uh, I ended up talking a lot actually, <laughs> but that's it. Oh, oh, that's cool. 
the decal do have like it's influencing the, the character anyways but that, that's it that i have for you today in this video another cool feature that i'm planning as well is the ability to pause the game because right now you can only play and stop the game so that's going to be a great addition as well and i hope you enjoy it if you're not subscribed to this channel consider subscribing and i see you in the next video